Yo, hello. Welcome back to r and Architects. I'm Robbie, I'm your host, and today I got something interesting to tell you. The other day we were hosting one of our weekly events. It's a meetup where we listen to music, talk to other creative people about design and whatnot. In our new map, Tarkovsky, maybe you know it. And somebody came in and started spawning a ton of markers on the ground in hopes of lagging everybody out. In broadcast events, you're not supposed to have maker pen. So how this person got it, who knows? And that has been happening to a lot of you. I know because some of you have told me. And so today, come come over here. I'm going to teach you how to get rid of these people super quick and easy. All right, let's go. All right. Today, I have two special guests. This is chicken number one, and this is chicken number two, and they're gonna be our helpers. So, let's get started. I'm gonna turn the camera around. We have both chicken, we have two markers. We'll talk about those in a little bit, but here's the circuit, see? It's super quick, it's really small, so we're gonna start again with a 30 hertz. Remember, 30 hertz just means that 30 times per second, this thing is gonna fire, like, like that, right? So 30 times per second, the whole thing is supposed to execute. It's not really executing anything, right? Because of our if. Our if is our conditional. Conditional basically says like, if something happens, then do that or do this other thing instead. For this example, we want a true to be able to do all that stuff. And what do we want to be true? Well, two things, luckily, we can just use local player on this chip, so we won't need that uh, get local player chip that we've used the other times. So first, we're gonna check if a player is holding the maker pen. Who? Anybody. Because this is running for everybody. Everybody runs these circuits on their own. It's like a local thing. So you're running it, your friend's running it, the other guy that's over there that you don't know who it is, this is also running it. You know, everybody's running them. So everybody's their own local player. Are you holding the maker pen? Right now, I'm not holding the maker pen, so this is false. And then we need this, get player account name, right? So the local player will want to know his account name. Remember, that's different than the display name. Like if, if you were able to see on top of my head, which you can't right now, but if you were able to see, it would say Robbie, right? But doesn't say that right now. But Robbie is not my account name. My account name is RNDM Racing, it's right here. So we're gonna compare the local player's account name, whoops, I'm stepping on the chicken, with this, which is mine. This is my username. So if you were to look for RNDM Racing in the game or almost in any social platform, you will find me, right? So that's me. So we want to know if it, this is not equals. Not equals, that means that it is different, right? Obviously for me right now, because I'm the only person in the room, the player account name and this account name, it, it will be equal. It, it, it is equal. So it's, it will be a true. Right now, it will be a false. We want it to be a true, right? We're going to use the equals chip. Again, this works. Whatever you have on the top, these two have to be the same thing at the same time for it to give out a true. So since this one for me right now is false, it's not going to do anything, right? But if somebody that isn't you, or in this case, me, was holding a maker pen, right, and wasn't me, this two would be true, then this if would go. Then, and here we have two options. I'm gonna teach you guys real quick. So we have a delay chip, right? This is super simple, you can use it all the time. And we have a sequence. They both will serve on the same way, but the sequence is more useful because it allows you to have one, two, if you edit it, or rather configure it, you can add more ports as exits, right? What the sequence does is that whenever the electricity, that's how I kind of think about that, right? Like the electricity goes there, boom. And then if it is true, then boom, it goes here. And then the sequencer will go like, bam, 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 however many numbers you have, right? Right now we only have two. So two things would happen one frame after the next frame, frame one, frame two, right? So almost at the same time, it's impossible to run things at exactly the same time. So we use a sequence for something like that. There's a way to do it with the delay, which is what I used to do before the sequence chip was here. So basically when you run on a delay of zero seconds, and then you have a run to something and an after delay to something on a zero second delay, that means that this is gonna run and then this is gonna run on the next frame, which is exactly the same thing as the sequence does 
again, you can use whichever one you want. Whenever you're using only for two things, it, it might be good to have a delay because then you can modify that delay a little bit if you don't want them to be like right after the other. Maybe you teleport someone and then you want music to start and then you want it to start like maybe three seconds after. So you put three seconds here and boom, teleport, music plays, something like that, right? The sequence tries to make it as instant as you can possibly can and it gives you the possibility to add more things to your sequence so that they will all fire almost at the same time, right? So what are the two things that we want to fire at the same time? Well, we have these interesting chips that are called player equip to dominant hand. Dominant hand doesn't mean left or right. Yeah, when you open a box, for example, that will determine which your dominant hand is. So the last hand that you use to open a box or something like that in the game is like whenever you grab a gun and you're on screen mode, that's the hand that's gonna grab that gun, right? That, that's kind of how you can tell which one is your dominant hand. When you take something out from the menu, whatever hand it's on, that's your dominant hand. The other one just just be the other one, the off hand, right? Why don't we put them on a series? Which is like, after we do the dominant hand, we do this. That way we wouldn't need the delay or the sequence and they would also run like one frame and then second frame, right? The reason why we don't do that is because if one fails, if you see here, this chip has a success. So it will tell you if it actually did it or not. So let's say you have something uh, and it tries to equip it to one hand and it kind of fails because of one reason or another. Then the second one that will be after on the right side over here wouldn't run. But because we're doing these by having them, they would both try to run no matter if one fails. So if it equips one thing to one hand but not the other, it would happen instead of not happening. Right? So that's why we do that. So then here we have some options. Again, we're keeping the local player here. That's important, again, because we keep the local player on all the other chips, right? Like on these ones over here and whatnot. So we have for the local player, if they're holding a maker pin and are not you or somebody that you approve of having maker pin in your room, then we're gonna equip an object. We're gonna force to equip true. So that means that it will, even if you have something in your hand, you will put this other thing in your hand and then still, means that if somebody else is holding that thing, then it will take it off of them and put it on this other player's hand, right? So that way no one can grab something to save him from getting this equipped, right? So we're doing the same thing for the other hand. And what are we equipping? Well, right now we got those two chickens right there, right? I put a tag on this one that is called chicken one and this one I put another tag called chicken two. So now we have these two chips Rec room object, get first with tag, and we got chicken one and chicken two. So here, if we were to plug them into it, it will equip the chickens to player's hands, right? So you can do this for any object, any object, any object. So if I take my maker pen here, right? I take my maker pen and I'm gonna use my connect tool and I were to grab this here and plug it on the top and plug this one on the bottom. That means that it would equip the chickens to the player's hand, right? So, but on the other example, I'm gonna plug this all back to the way it was. We have something else because if you see, the chickens don't really have like a chip on top of them, right? That's why we're using the tag. But items like these ones, like the erasers, they do come with a chip, right? You can use a marker, you can use something like that, like a prop. And so that way you can just grab that thing, plug it straight into the into the object that we need. So object to equip. Remember, we just need two individual objects so that it tries to equip one to each hand. Doesn't matter which hand, but not the same object to both hands because that's not gonna work, right? So that means now with these little chips right here, if somebody comes into your room and you're hosting an event or, or something, right? You, you're working, you don't want anybody to come in here and just like be able to grab their makeup and start deleting things or doing whatever mess they're trying to do, right? This is gonna be like, boom, equip it and it, it takes it away because then instead I'm gonna have a chicken in my hand and you know, that, that, that's kind of funny. So, all right, hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully this was useful. Remember to subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see next and that's it. Super quick. I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao. Robbie out.